This is part four of this video series. ECU to PC communications. This section will document the steps to establish communications between the programmer's PC and the ECU using one of the two approved USB to CAN converters. The use of HF impulse is first used, then setup of CODIS's communications. So power the controller. Assure the controller is powered up. It doesn't have to be connected to the actual machine, but needs to be connected to the harness that would supply power and communications to the controller. For more information on what pins are required, refer to the technical reference guide located in the electronics portal on the hydroforce.com website. So on the screen, we're looking at HF impulse. First thing I want to do is um, kind of talk about these icons at the top. These are different hydroforce icons of controllers that could be uh, communicated with. Um, your version of HF impulse may or may not have as many as mine do, but I'm going to look for the one that says communication with ECU XXXX. Um, I'm going to come onto this page and we can see that we can uh, communicate with either the Kvasser or the Peak PKN USB. So one of the other needs to be used. <clears throat> mine right now is the Kvasser Leaf Light. Baud rate at 250K. It's just the communication rate that I'm using to talk over a CAN to my controller. If I hit start, it's going to go out and try to find a controller. And it found mine at um, uh, found mine at code CAN node ID 1, CODIS ID 2. The model number and the serial number of the controller will be displayed. Controllers that are coming out of the box will have addresses of 127. So I've found it and I've I've started the search, I've stopped, I've selected it, then hit select. I want to do the initial file download into the controller from here. So I'm going to open my file. And as you recall in the last video, we created, um, we went ahead and uh, uh, compiled the program so we know it does compile. And we've created a .bin file. So presentations, technical help. If I go and find that .bin file, in my directory. We can see it was created at 1053. I'm going to open it and then I'm going to push download. Once again the controller is still powered up. I'm still communicating it with my my CAN devices, the USB to CAN converter to the controller. So it's going to do the initial download into the controller which is going to download um, uh, different node IDs that I've created in the Backbone file. So this will just take a short period of time. As you recall in the other videos, we have not communicated with the controller yet. So this is our first opportunity to get our program into the controller. HF Impulse will be used on several of the Hydroforce controllers, including the ECDR 506 a the EVDR and ECDR 0201A and the ECDR 0203A controller. It's committing to flash. And there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and then um, minimize this and I'm going to go over to my codices. To communicate through codices, I've got to come on online and the communication parameters. We can see here that I had a node ID of two, which is what we found on the HF impulse, and I'm using my Kvasser CAN, CAN driver. If we're using peak, it would be peak CAN. So you would just highlight it and type in peak CAN. Should be able to go online login. So the program's changed, so it wants to re-download the program, that's fine. Notice that we've got some other diff um, information in the lower right hand corner of codices you know it, the the running is not highlighted so that tells us that the controller is offline um, we are not forcing variables so that's other indication or other information we can use as soon as this gets done downloading we'll be able to start the controller within codices just a little while longer Okay. 
as a reminder, all this information is is um, available through our electronics portal as far as being able to download codices and HF Impulse. Okay, so it, it's gone away. If I come online, then run, or I could have hit an F5. We notice that the running in the lower right hand corner is now turned dark. And we can see real values coming in for our for our, our registers. If I go back to potentiometer, ah, potentiometer has a value of zero right now. So I take my potentiometer that I have connected to my controller. And when I change that, we can see that you get um, different values. This would be a zero to 1023 number. It's, it's raw data coming in. So if I turn them all the way up, zero to 1023, we can see the output of the scale block is at five amps, or I'm sorry, five volts, 5,000 millivolts. And we're sending a value of 1100 to the, to the controller. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. So 434, we got a value of 434. If we come over to main or valve one, we can see this 434 is here. I've got a power supply, this 14 volt power supply. That's what it says, 1407. And then there's the feedback. Here's the coil that's going to the controller. And here's our, our ratio number that's going to the controller. This concludes the part four video on ECU to PC communications.